Okay, so we've made introductory remarks about uh, about the environment around a rotating uh, rotating star, and we've found some very interesting examples of frame dragging. And now let's turn to the uh, to, uh, to the main event. Okay, the the Kerr metric, the exact solution. Okay, for the metric outside of a rotating star, the star has a given mass and it has a given angular uh, angular momentum. Which, which are constant, uh, and, uh, and, the, and, and we can uh, find the exact metric. Well, we can't. It's quite a task to do so, but uh, Roy Kerr could, could, and he did it in the 1960s. And like, uh, like many examples where you, where you get an exact solution, you have a tremendous amount of progress in the field because of that. Okay, so uh, the Kerr metric has led to an enormous amount uh, un better understanding of black holes, uh, general relativity, and, uh, and applications uh, to, uh, to astrophysics. So it's, a, it's, a, it's more complicated than the Schwarzschild case, so let's take a look at it. Here it is, down here, so ds squared, it has a term that goes like dt squared with a prefactor, okay? And I see that that, that prefactor has the possibility of going to zero and changing sign, much like the Schwarzschild situation. Okay, so the R sub S is again the Schwarzschild radius. Okay, re very relevant to a non-rotating star. Okay, uh, rho uh, here is R squared plus A squared cosine squared theta. We start off using uh, coordinates that look like good old uh, uh, spherical polar coordinates far from, the, far from the star, which is in the vicinity of the origin. Okay, and this parameter A is is proportional to the angular momentum of the star per mass. Okay, okay. So it's a natural parameter to characterize these uh, these uh, the rotating objects. So there's the first term. Then we get a term that mixes uh, dt with d phi. Okay, as as we expect. Okay, and so we know that the prefactor here is going to be something like omega, and we'll we'll be very precise about that soon. Uh, we notice that it has uh, a singularity here. When rho squared uh, goes to, to zero, there's a singularity. And rho squared is r squared plus a squared cosine squared theta. We're going to see that the singularity at rho equals zero is an actual uh, physical singularity. That's where the Riemann tensor blows up. There are other singularities here. We have to understand them, just like we have to, we have to understand the uh, the surface of infinite redshift and the event horizon of the Schwarzschild uh, 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 black hole. In, in that case, those two uh, surfaces were coincident, but there, there were different concepts related, related to both of them. Okay, so there are two terms. Okay, there's a term going like the R squared, and it has a, a denominator which is delta. Okay, and delta is R squared minus RS, RS being R Schwarzschild, R plus a squared. So there's a possibility, because of that minus sign here, for delta to be equal to zero. Okay, well it's downstairs, so it's like, it's, it's like having a, a divergent uh, a bit of the metric, again, similar to, uh, to Schwarzschild. Then there's a rho squared uh, d theta squared, okay? And then, and then finally there's a term that goes like d phi squared, and again it has the singularity uh, uh, which is which is physical one uh, one upon rho squared. Okay, so that's the that's the metric. It's written down in your supplementary lecture eleven. Uh, hold it to hold it to the side uh, because I'll be referring to it ag again and again, and I can't flip the poster board over uh, uh, again, again and again. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to is to check that you haven't goofed up. So we certainly should check that if the thing is not rotating, we get back to the Schwarzschild metric. So, so do that. Just take j to zero and check that you get the Schwarzschild metric. That's an easy exercise to do, okay? And you'll be making friends with these with these formulas to have a lot of moving parts. Then you can check that when r goes to infinity, okay, we get very far away from the from, from the mass. Its influence on the metric should go away. We should retrieve the Minkowski metric, and we do so in a nice smooth way. So, so check that as well. There are other limits you can take, and here's an interesting one which shows us to be careful, okay? Let's, let's, uh, let's let uh, the mass of the star go to zero, but let the angular momentum go to, go to zero at the same rate, so that the ratio A, the parameter in 
the, the curve metric, j over m is fixed. Okay, I can take that, I can take that limit, okay, to do that, do that uh, arithmetic. We'll be checking some of this arithmetic in recitation section uh, uh, as well, but I'm, I'm going to uh, just jump ahead here in, in, in the lecture. And then the S squared becomes uh, this, this uh, funny looking object. Okay, well if you work on it a little bit, just take a look at, uh, uh, take a look at it and, and try a few uh, substitutions, you'll see that actually it's the Minkowski metric is hiding here. The, the change of coordinates that you're going to want to, to, to try is just, it's, it's just basically the definition of spherical polar coordinates, but shifted a bit. So x is not r sine theta cosine phi, x is square root of r squared plus a squared times this. Okay, and similarly for y, and then z is, is what you would imagine. Okay, then, then just make those substitutions. Okay, and lo and behold, uh, you, you find that, that the space uh, in, in this limit is indeed naive. It's good old Minkowski space. Okay, so, okay. so, so that's, that's understandable, but but, but you see, we learned that in this, li in this limit, r equals zero, okay, r equals zero corresponds to a disk of radius a in the equatorial plane, z equals zero, theta equals pi over two, okay, <coughs> right? So, uh, okay, so, so here's, here's, here's uh, the scale of x is set not by r, but by r squared plus a squared, similarly, similarly, for, uh, similarly for y. Okay, <coughs> okay, and, and so you see taking, taking r equal to zero, okay, I get x is equal to a sine cosine, y is equal to a sine cosine, and then I'll, and then I'll take theta equals pi over two, so I'm, I'm down to the equatorial plane, okay? So r equals zero, you see, corresponds to a disk, x squared plus y squared equals a squared, okay? It's only when we take a to zero do we get ordinary spherical coordinates. Okay, so this is what this is the another situation that, that we've seen before, and it always is is a surprise. You know, we parameterize the a, a space uh, in a conventional fashion. We have a good intuition in it for flat space, a uh, flat a spatial metric. Okay, it's not the case here, and we learn in fact that R is not what you thought it might be, especially when it's when it's small and comparable to A. It isn't what you what what you think what you think it is. It's not ordinary uh, uh, spherical polar coordinates. Uh, the r equals zero uh, limit corresponds to a disk in the in the equatorial in the equatorial plane. Okay, now we're going to find uh, again. Well, I'll, I'll I'll be stating you know that the, that the limit when rho goes to zero. Okay, that's where you find a singularity in the metric. That's the physical uh, a singularity that we that we. Expect, and uh, you see R equals zero corresponds actually to a disk. So it's a disk of, of singularity where the Riemann uh, curvature tensor blows up. Okay, so quite a surprise. Um, uh, okay, and it, it's clear that we're going to be challenged to make a physical uh, interpretation of all the formulas that we get out of the out of the curve metric. Well, the first sort of things we we better do with with the metric, okay, is uh, be bold and look for its surfaces of infinite redshift. And look for its event horizons. Okay. So we, we know we know how to do that. The surfaces of infinite redshift. I want to find that surface where g lower zero zero is equal to zero. Okay. Where the where the uh, dt squared term in the metric has a coefficient of zero, with a coefficient flip sign, so that outside, okay, we have ordinary concept of time like uh, a, a time like intervals, but Inside the the, uh, the surface of I of infinite uh, uh, redshift, okay, uh, the uh, a, a time like intervals become space like, okay, as we saw in the Schwarzschild metric, you know, which led to uh, uh, interesting phenomena there. So I'll set GTT equal to zero. GTT in in this case, remember, it's one minus R S uh, times R over rho, okay, over rho squared, and rho squared was r squared plus a squared cosine squared theta. So I set that equal to zero, and then I solve for r. Okay, so I'm, I'm writing it r sub inf, because I know that's a surface of infinite redshift, and I, and I get uh, two solutions. There are two surfaces 
okay, where uh, GTT is equal to zero, and uh, and here they are. Okay, that's just the result of doing that doing that arithmetic. I see. I get sensible solutions as long as the angular momentum is not too big. There's a constraint on the possible angular momentum. The angular momentum is, is too large. These solutions become pathological. Okay, but it's a, but uh, but uh, when you plug in numbers, there you see that the, the constraint is it's not very uh, is not very confining. Okay, so so there you have you have it, and and, and I think one of the surprises is, uh, of course, that uh, we have two surfaces, and we'll want to uh, take a look at both of them. Well, before we do that, let's go on and take a look at event horizons, which are given by GRR equals infinity. Same idea as in the Schwarzschild case. GRR was rho squared over delta, and delta was this combination here, where I replaced A by its definition J over MC. Okay, and so there, so let's, uh, so let's make the denominator uh, zero. Okay, so I have easy arithmetic, really not looking so much different from this arithmetic. And I get R plus minus, I get two solutions. Okay, and, uh, and, and here they are. Okay, so I see, in fact, Let's just look at the plus, in the plus ones first, because that's what we'll be emphasizing, okay? So the outer uh, uh, surface of infinite redshift and the outer event horizon. I see that the, that the outer event horizon lies inside the surface of infinite redshift, right? Right? Because you, you see, you, you see they'll go, they're going to coincide only at that point uh, where cosine theta is equal to one. That's the, cosine theta is the only difference between those two, those two surfaces. Okay, so, uh, so at the poles, they're going to coincide, but in the equatorial plane, uh, our, our, the uh, radius of the, of the infinite redshift surface is greater than the radius of the event horizon. Okay, uh, as, as stated there. Okay, and so we'll, we'll take a look at that. Okay, we also note that the curve metric is singular, where rho squared is equal to zero. You can check that that the um, that the components of the four component Raymond uh, tensor diverge there. It's a real it's it's a real singularity. This is incorrect. Not r mu nu, but r mu nu, and and alpha beta is equal to is equal is uh, divergent. Okay, I got put the other indices on here, so I'll put out any any of them. It's the four component of that diverges. Okay. Uh, okay, and again. Uh, the claim is that that's where uh, the Riemann uh, curvature tangent diverges at rho squared equals zero. To achieve rho squared equals zero, well, here's the formula. It's the sum of two squares, so you'll need r equals zero and theta equals pi over two. Okay. Well, that's what that's what we that, that was the region we were looking at. We were looking at before. Okay, where we were looking at the limit uh, where j went to zero and m go to zero such that a was fixed. Okay. So we have a we have this this funny. Um, uh, this funny disk where inside the uh, all the surfaces where we have the divergence in the uh, Riemann curvature tensor. Okay. Okay, fine. So let's plot these. Let's take a look at these surfaces. And I'm just going to plot it up kind of crudely because that, that, that's really all that, all that I need here. Okay. And and here it is. Uh, here's my the dotted line is my is my is my disk. Okay, where rho is equal to zero, and then uh, coming in from the outside, I had a, I had r plus uh, uh, inf, then I then I reached r plus event horizon, then I got the, the the minus solutions over here. So these two surfaces, the blue ones, are a surface of, re of infinite redshift. Okay, and then I have an and I in a, a event horizon, and, and another inside a event horizon here. Okay, where uh, g sub r r is uh, is um, is is, um, uh, is is divergent. Okay, and then and the, from the astrophysical point of view, and, and really in a lot of our applications, the interesting region here, okay, is, is what's called the ergosphere. Okay, between the uh, surface of infinite redshift and the uh, okay and the first and the first event horizon. Okay. This is interesting. It's in this region where GTT is less than zero, okay, and it's in this region where an observer cannot maintain a fixed position. Okay, we we, we showed that in the context of uh, of the Schwarzschild uh, uh, 
plus your metric, okay? And we'll, and we'll uh, do a similar exercise uh, like that in just, uh, in, in just a moment. Okay, so what we're going to do is to, is to, is to probe inside the ergosphere, get inside the redshift surface. Now we can go in and we can come back out, right? Because this is not an event horizon, this is just uh, a surface of, of infinite redshift. Okay, so there's nothing, nothing to stop us from going in and going out. The, uh, the light cones don't flip over, okay, until I hit the event horizons, okay? These are the event horizons where G, GRR is, uh, uh, is, is divergent, okay? And, and that's all the difference. These are just the surfaces of infinite, of infinite redshift. And we can, we can take a spaceship in and take, and, and take it out. We can, we can imagine that matter is attracted to, this, to, to the mass at the middle of this thing. It comes in, it goes into the ergosphere. Interesting ha things happen, we'll study them, okay? And then radiation and, and such can, can leak out through the ergosphere, okay? So this, is, uh, so this gives us a very, very uh, rich uh, phenomenology and we'll want to study it and we'll, uh, we'll pick it up 